Hi everybody, I can't wait to show you what I've been working on. In about two weeks, one of my short-term tenants is moving out. That gives me a chance to add a desk into the living room because I ran out of time the first round when we renovated the entire cottage from floor to ceiling. I found a vintage desk, you know how I love vintage, from Facebook Marketplace. It was originally priced at $200 and we bargained down to 60 bucks. It's some pretty good manufacturer. I don't want to leave the wood stained color. Right now I have too much natural wood colors in the living room and I want to add the desk as kind of a statement foundation piece and I want to paint it a different saturated color. You'll see what I'm th talking about but I know it's controversial because a lot of people out there don't believe in painting vintage furniture. Now, before I bring any furniture piece into the house, I really have to do a thorough cleaning. I thought this was a great vintage piece. Let's, let's put this drawer in. Let's see. Joints are good. I've been having good, good results with Simple Green. So I'm going to use that to kind of give us a good wash. And if I need to, I'll ultimately actually do um, steel wool or light sandpaper. Let it sit for a second. I just like the way it smells. It smells really good. And then for the first pass, I'm just going to be letting it sit and just using a, a cloth to wipe it down. This will just get off the grime initially. Ooh, that is their grime. Look at that. Sometimes I am impatient and I don't give it a chance to break in. Stuff is pretty good. So I'm going to use my trusty chalk paint on this, so it's not going to need any primer. But I want to get off as much as the of the shiny sort of varnish that's on here. Okay, here's something I didn't know until now, cleaning this thing, but this little desk part, this desktop part, it's a little, needs a little bit of sanding, but it pulls all the way out. Let's see if I can show you. That's kind of cool, huh? I think I'm gonna change out the hardware. I don't really love the hardware. I saw one little spider web, so. I'm gonna make sure that I'm not bringing any unwanted guests to the house. I glued down a piece of the veneer that was popping off, and I'm also sanding down that area with the water stains. For this little pull-out desk, a little sticky, so I'm gonna sand this down so that it can slide in and out a little bit better. So I actually want to make the body of this piece navy blue, and I'll show you the color. But I found this beautiful stencil that looks like caning, looks like faux caning, and I want to use it here. So I'm going to tape off this one little area, which already has a little bit of this inlay, this carved inlay, which is cute. So I want to make this base color white, and then the caning contrast color is kind of a camel color. The paint company is called Country Chic, and the color the color is called Peacoat, a Peacoat Navy. All right, so let's give this a try. And the reason why people love working with chalk paint is because you don't usually have to prime before you paint. All right, this is the first layer of paint. And it's pretty good coverage. Obviously, it's gonna need a second coat and possibly a third. I'm going to do a faux caning basket weave look on this tabletop and on this drawer front. I think I like to have, surprising enough, I want to have the base coat be the camel and then the white be the contrasting basket weave.
Okay, so what's happening now is that I ordered stencils a few days ago and they've been delayed. So I have to move forward. So today I'm going to use Annie Sloan's clear wax. It will enrich the color and it will seal in the paint. I always love Annie Sloan's brand. I've tried other brands. This is my favorite. I'm going to wax everything and then just leave the area that I'm going to stencil for tomorrow. Hopefully the stencil will come tomorrow. Just take an old t-shirt. Now I've marked the center of my desktop and I'm just going to try and use some white chalk because I don't want to see any pencil marks. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the paint. I'm using an off-white. going to lay down the second stencil and you want to match and line up the last pattern which is here and then that'll bring you to the next repeat After stenciling, if you touch the surface of your wood, sometimes there's a little bit too much texture from the chalk paint. So you want to give it a very, very fine pass with a sandpaper sponge and very, very fine. That way you're just going to make everything feel smooth, and especially in my case because this desktop rolls in underneath this area and I don't want it to be... I want it to be smooth. Okay, just checking for any rough spots. Okay, now I'm going to wax the top. Just with a soft t-shirt rag. I did decide to change out the hardware of the drawers to something a little bit more modern and practical. I like these um, cup holes because they're so sturdy for a big, long drawer. The stenciling process went pretty quickly. I'm going to have to wait a little bit to put the desk inside the actual cottage. But for right now, you can use your imagination. You could see it being styled a million different ways and I think that it's going to hit the right style spot for that cottage just to give that one corner that's so plain a little personality. That's one thing that when you're providing a furnished rental it can't just look cookie cutter. It has to have one or two th or three things. It could be small things that are just a little bit unique. I think this is the perfect piece for a small space. They have a small profile and they fit into any little corner and they are made to last. Okay, well that's it for me here at Nutshell Living. I hope to see you next time for more small space tips and tricks. Bye.